Hi everyone. Let's take a look at problem 1-1a where we're dealing with Barron's Repair Shop and we have 11 transactions and we're going to prepare a tabular analysis of these transactions using increases and decreases as a way to show uh, the impact on the balance sheet. Okay, let's take a look at the first transaction just to the left of my mouse. Invested cash to start the repair shop and it looks like $10,000. So um, uh, first, let's number our transactions as, as we uh, work these. And I want to turn that into just a plain number. OK, and if I bring this one to light now, we see um, I probably need to format all of this uh, into a comma with no decimal places. We don't need cents for the purposes of this analysis. And uh, let me shrink some of this down a little bit so we get a little bit more screen view. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Um, what we have is an increase of cash of $10,000 and an increase of capital. Um, and the name of that account is Nancy Barron Capital, if, it's, if the name is pronounced Barron. Okay, that's transaction one. Now let's look at transaction two. We purchased equipment for cash for $5,000. So I would expect to see equipment increase by 5000 And at the same time, if we spend it on cash, we'll see a decrease in cash. So um, again, our, our accounting equation stays in balance. We have an increase of an asset here and a decrease there. The first transaction, we had an increase of assets and an increase in owner's equity. All right, number three, paid cash for May rent. Well, I'm going to expect that to decrease. And uh, I think in this format, we'll show a decrease in owner's equity. Now, eventually, we'll, we'll break this down and show that uh, the income statement rolls into owner's equity so that revenues would increase owner's equity and expenses would decrease them. Um, and again, our accounting equation stays in balance. Number four, paid cash for supplies of $500. Again, we're going to see an impact of cash. $500. Um, and if we paid cash for supplies, then the, the indication here is we haven't yet used the supplies, so supplies should increase by $500, and we're in balance. All right, number six, received cash from customers for repair services. All right, now cash increases, right, $5,100. Um, oh, I skipped number five. Let's do five first. Incurred advertising cost for the Beacon News on account 250. All right, if that's on account, then we have an accounts, an increase in a liability accounts payable, $250. Um, and we incurred advertising costs, so that we would record using the accrual basis accounting, which would decrease owner's equity. Okay, so we're recognizing the expense at the same time we record the obligation. Now number six, re, six, received cash from customers for repair services. Okay, so we get 5100 That should increase our uh, equity, and we're in balance. Number seven, withdrew cash for personal use for $1,000. Okay, here we see cash being reduced for $1,000, and a withdrawal is a part of owner's equity, so we should see that decrease as well. Number eight, Paid part-time employee salaries, $2,000. So owner's equity decreases by $2,000. Looks like we paid them for cash, I'm going to assume, $2,000. All right, now let me slide a little bit uh, so we can see a little bit of number nine on the screen as well as uh, anything else. Okay, number nine, paid the utility bills of $140. All right, so cash again decreases $140. Oop, I want to format all of these in case we need them. And um, I believe that's an expense, so that decreases owner's equity. Number 10, provided repair services on, a, on account to customers. All right, now with uh, let me bring some numbers in here. And that needs to be like that. Okay, if on number 10, we provided rare repair services on account, then that means somebody owes us money. We're going to have a $750 accounts receivable. 
uh, but we would record the revenue, which would increase owner's equity. Number 11, we collect the cash, or at least 120 of it. So I think we're only going to see 120 flip-flop here, an increase in cash and a decrease of accounts receivable. Okay, so there's our tabular analysis of the transactions. Um, and now we could sum them, I suppose, uh, but perhaps there's no reason to, or perhaps there is. Let's, let's okay, sum those. Um, let me format this again. Okay, and you'll see here if I hit the F2 key, two key I'm grabbing a, uh, oh, it's got a running sum going forward in all of these. So let me bring all of this to light now so we can see how there was a sum going on that showed that we were always in balance. See, 5,000, 10,000 equals the 10,000, 5 plus 5. And in any transaction, we're always in balance. Like after transaction 5, we had total assets of, uh, that comes out to be 9,600. Okay, and on this side, we have 9,600. So we're always in balance. And so down at the end, uh, we can compute that and tackle part B. Okay. So here we have total assets. At the end is 12,310. We combine the liabilities and equity, and it's 12,310. So we did the transactions correctly. All right, so the ending capital now. Now I may need to expand this. Some of this is going to slide off the screen. So let's, let's shrink this to give us some room here um, and see if that will fit in. Okay, so again, I want to format this. And we'll have to format this as well and, and make this look a little bit uh, correct amounts as well. But let's work right here for now. All right, ending capital is 12060 coming from there. Oh, and all of this I would like to format exactly the same. All right, so we'll put make this comma, no decimal places. Then we add the drawings. And the drawings came from the transaction in cell M. 36, number 7, we took 1,000 out. Okay, so then we could produce a subtotal. And then we would duck, deduct any investments, right? And what that gives us is our net income. Okay, so the illustration of this shows that when we look at all the owner's equity transactions, it's made up of revenues and expenses, which makes up the income statement. And so if we take the ending, we need to back out the non-revenue and expense transactions. So we back out the deduct, the, or we add in the deductions, and we back out the investments to, put, to compute net income. So that's one way of, uh, of uh, deriving net income from this transaction approach. All right, now service revenues. Uh, now that we've done that, I want to shrink some of this here so we can get this large so we can see that as well. All right, so the service revenues was the sum of the 5100 and the 7100. So there's the 5100 and the and the $750. I said that incorrectly. And now we can put, per, show how that income statement works. Then the salaries expense came from um, came from cell M38, which was $2000. Oh, let me format these as well. Comma no decimal places. The rent expense was 400, which came from uh, cell M28. I'll hit the F2 and you'll see it'll highlight it, okay? Advertising expense came from, was it uh, cell M32? Uh, I know you can't see the numbers there, but it's the 250. Okay, and then utilities expense came from, let me uh, bring that to light too. Utilities expense was the $140 to the left of my mouse right there. Okay, so if we sum those now, you'll see that's just a sum command. You can read that right there to the left of my mouse. Sum all those expenses. We've got 279. Oh, let me format this one correctly. And our end result is net income of 3060 So here we use a direct approach where we identify those owner equity transactions that really flow to the income statement. Here we use an indirect approach where we take the entire owner's equity and back out those items that wouldn't appear on the income statement. And that takes care of part B, where from the analysis we've computed 
net income for the month of May. Okay, everyone, I hope you found this uh, exercise beneficial to your understanding. Bye now.